Hi, Borderline Mom here. Um, I did not get to go out and do, I know it's Tuesday, I did not get to go out and do my day. Um, yeah, for a few different uh, reasons. Uh, one, the van was in the shop. Um, my brake line was cut. Um, we're not quite sure how. Um, I know I ran over something, but it was, oh, a oh, good two weeks before the brakes went that, um, you know, I ran over it. And the guy said, the, uh, uh, mechanic says it's so it was so high up on the brake line that it honestly looked like somebody had cut my brake line. So it's like, okay, I don't know. But <sighs> Van was in the shop, so I didn't get to go anywhere today. Um, but I am home. Um, I am also having a bit of a sick day um female problems that's all i'm gonna say uh, um so happy mom got me some pampering because i needed it i could not move this morning it just it was that bad but i guess that's a little tmi sorry <laughs> um but it is tuesday i really didn't do much for cooking but, um, I really didn't want to do a cooking video because it's a bit, it was just, we just did a simple meal here, as you can see here. <laughs> uh, we have, um, couscous here. I'll do it like this. And there we go. We have couscous, corn, peas, and this is, um, Mrs. Dash, uh, grilling, uh, chicken flavored. And I steamed some asparagus, which I mixed with a little bit of, you know, the store brand Velveeta cheese for me. Um, I don't like my asparagus plain. But put a little cheese on it and mm, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> I love it. The kids are inside eating their dinner, so I figured I will come out here where it's a little bit more quiet. Um, you may hear the dogs bark occasionally. Uh, that is Coco and Dallas, my two dogs, well, my husband's two dogs. Not going to get into that topic. But I figured since you guys did enjoy the first one, we might as well have another one. So, oh. <laughs> Three pieces are all stuck together. There we go. Ah. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. I just love it with some cheese. <laughs> but mm, I figured I would start off where I left off. Um, and that is with Candace. Uh, um... Uh, let's see, I got, I actually got pregnant with Candace right after I had moved up to Minnesota. <clears throat> now, Minnesota, I was living my dream. Mm. <laughs> I miss it so much. Um, I could have done without, you know, the junk that came with the house but we were living in this beautiful old farmhouse and i mean it was old enough that at that time my uh, father-in-law who is 50 years old had learned how to crawl in that house and I mean, it's it was the house itself was passed down through um, a couple, you know, at least two generations. 
Um, I want to say my husband was the third generation, at least the third generation to have it. Maybe, you know, a bit higher up. And I mean, you know, fourth, fifth, higher up. But I don't know for certain. Um, they literally had to build the window, the upstairs window, after they put the bed inside. Because there was no other way to get the bed up there. So, from what I understand, you know, they put the bed in before the window or something. I don't know. Uh, that's what I heard. Um, my husband, uh, Sean, he had a great job. Well, not great, but he had a good job. Um... It was a small town, and I mean, the high school, middle school, and elementary school were all together. Mm. Very good couscous. <laughs> so, it was kind of, you know, and everybody knows everybody. Everybody's up in your business. But I loved it. It was nice. Um, it was shortly after I moved up there that I found out I was pregnant with Candace. Um, I worked um, seasonal jobs. And I mean, like, you know, I worked um, the Christmas season, you know, from October through, like, January. And that was just to get, you know, some extra money for the house, you know, for Christmas. Um, but other than that, we paid all our bills and we lived very comfortably. And, you know, we were self-sustained, well, not self-sustained. I mean, we didn't have to rely on anybody. We weren't on assistance. We weren't. <clears throat> I mean, legally. I mean, technically, you know, we could have been considered poverty level. But we lived more like we were middle class. Um, you know, we could take a small vacation here and there. We couldn't do nothing extravagant. You know, I mean, we didn't have, like, the money to go to Disney World. But then if we wanted to do that, well... The in-laws took us. <laughs> so, but it was really nice. I mean, I was a stay-at-home mom. My whole point, I took care of the kids. And that was it. I cooked, I cleaned, I took care of the kids. And um, when that, um, uh, we, I also had a, I guess you could say, an, a, um, adopted child <laughs> um who was a, a close to my age <laughs> um there was a 19 sorry 18 19 year old who lived you know down, well no he might have been 17 i don't know but he lived down the road and he was constantly getting in fights with his mom and just Mm. Yeah. She just could she couldn't handle him. The two of them just they were so volatile they could not live under the same roof. So the mom paid uh Sean and I to let her, to let him live with us. Which was really nice. I mean, he got along great with the kids. Um, he babysat while I worked. I mean, I worked night shift. So it wasn't, and I mean overnight. So he didn't have to watch the kids a lot. Except like in the mornings when I tried to sleep, when I was sleeping. And it was only Avery at that time. So, 
but they got along, you know, great. He would, he played with Avery and kept, kept Avery occupied so I could get a nap. Um, and then, you know, come Avery's bedtime, I would go to, I would get another nap, you know, I would nap. Oh, a few hours, and I'd get home at 7, about 10, 11 o'clock, well, yeah, probably about 9, 10. I would get up, I would take care of Avery, I would lay down, take a nap with him when he got tired for his nap, and then I would get up, play with him, and then I'd go back to sleep until it was time to get up and get ready for my shift, so... Mm. Hmm. Yes, what? Son dumped all his food in the hallway. I am. Mm. Oh, well. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's in front of my door. I am sorry. I'll clean it. Hmm. <clears throat> but oh well. Actually, in front of my door, I'm kind of in my room a little bit. I will clean it up. We don't know where the top to Hunter's uh, high chair went, and I'm sorry. I'm trying to stay away. I don't feel good. I have another spider down here. Oh, cool. Sorry, I came out here for quiet and just, you know, meh. Mm. <laughs> no, I'll leave you alone just as soon as I finish this. Okay, I'm fine. I don't, I don't mind. If you don't mind listening to the story. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'm sharing with people. Okay. <laughs> Have a ball. Yeah. But, um, no. So it was helpful because he did clean. I would cook, he would do the dishes, he would pick up the living room, you know, he would clean for me. And when I went into the hospital with labor for Candace, when I got out, my house, the entire downstairs, was oh, wonderfully clean. <laughs> but I disappeared where we, um, I'm trying to think where. <sighs> Sean and I went away for a while. And, um, my mother-in-law came in and kicked the guy out. She literally, you know, told him to get in her car. And she drove him to a homeless shelter and left him there without, cons without consulting us, without even telling us. We found out when we got back. So it's like, okay, um, how rude. Hmm? Hmm. Hmm. But, so, um, but no. I had my own little problems with Candace. <sighs> Bless her heart. Born in February in Minnesota. Come summer. She was about between three and four months. So February, March, April, May. Yeah, come May. It's starting to warm up and get a little warm. Oh yeah, May, June. Oh my God. 
she had a heat rash constantly. We could not get rid of the heat rash. Um, we did not have air condition. We didn't have air conditioners. Um, you know, the house was too old. The wiring, the electric systems could not handle modern AC um, units. So, we used fans. But it was nice. It was fine for us. I mean, nice country living. I mean, my neighbor's at least a quarter of a mile down the road. I loved it. I mean, I had cows. No, I had cows in the backyard. And I had um, fields on the left, the right, across the street, and beyond the cows. We had fields. <sighs> it was beautiful. Uh, and on and when the conditions were right, I could see the Aurora Borealis <laughs> out of my window. <laughs> Uh, it was nice. I've seen UFOs. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, uh, um. No. I don't know who. I'm not going to get into all the details of who all lived with us and whatnot either, because there is a lot more. But oh, it's a gypsy. Yeah, she's been making up against me. <laughs> now you can never. Okay. Hi, Gypsy. My daughter's cat. Outdoor kitty. Yes. She was a feral that got taken in. My daughter loves taking in feral cats. <laughs> so. Um. But. It was at that point that, you know, CPS kind of got called in. When Candace was four months old, uh, we, my parents, flew us all down here to Virginia and gave us a week at um, Massanutten, or at least a weekend. I know it was three or four days that we stayed at um, Timeshare, beautiful condo in Massanutten. I loved it. Had a big old hot tub to ourselves. Hot tub, bathtub, slash bathtub to ourselves. Oh my god, it was wonderful. We didn't do. We didn't go anywhere. We just we stayed inside and just ah. Uh, you know, we reconnected. It was, you know, after baby, baby moon. Um, my mom kept both kids. Hmm. So. And we were basically down here for a week. Um, I honestly wish... I had left my kids down here with my mom. My gut. My mother, I guess my women's intuition told me to leave my kids there. To let them stay for a while. You know, for a while longer. But I ignored it. And... It, it hurt. Um, when we got back, somebody um, had made a false claim to CPS on us. Supposedly, we had 13 cats inside the house. And we had rats, not mice, rats in our house. 
You know, not pet rats, but wild rats. I'm like, I'm sorry. If you have, for one, it that, that just blows my mind. If you have 13 cats living inside your house, how do you get rats? I mean, this isn't Tom and Jerry. Ay. It's like, come on. Yeah. No, the problem was we had not, um, our lawnmower had broke and was in the shop. It was getting repaired. So our grass had not been cut for two weeks. Just when they came in, the house. It was, as they said, it was overcrowded. Mm. 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 Okay. At this point, I'd like to point out my mother-in-law was a hoarder. Or, no, I should say is a hoarder. Okay? Her house looked like the housing, the houses you see on hoarding buried alive. Except hers, it none of it was trash, though. She didn't have trash and stuff piled up. No. She had random crafting junk. Yes? I hear what's that. Mukbang. Huh? Mukbang. What the hell is that? It is where you eat, a, eat your meal... In front of an audience, I eat the camera, and talk to them while you're eating. It's really big on YouTube. I thought you would have known. Um, no, I don't watch stupid stuff on YouTube. I thought you said you watched Tracy Lynn, the trailer, tra uh, trailer trash Tammy. No, I've seen clips of her crap on Facebook. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh. Okay, sorry. Well, a lot of her, that's what a lot of her videos are. She's sitting in the car eating dinner with people, you know, saying, you know, how good it is or, you know. I think, I think the latest one was two rednecks eating Kentucky Fried Chicken. Okay, well, while you're out here, the boy managed to dump all his food in the hallway. I cleaned it up already. All right, I'm. He got into trouble. Or something, and now they are both in trouble and going to bed because they're not eating. Okay, well, um, am I the only one who can watch the kids? <sighs> but no, um, no. I mean, this woman—it's the walls. Of her room were lying. What? You were doing a video without us? It's Tuesday. Wow. Tuesday, what? That is a long thing. Yeah. Tuesday is my mukbangs. Would you like to take a bite in front of the camera? There, you're on camera eating. <laughs> It wasn't really on camera. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were. Right. No. Here. Okay. I'm in closer. See here. I'll bring it. It's right here. You can come here and take a bite. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
I think I made it a little dry. Yeah. <laughs> mm -mm. <coughs> I... but... What? All right, do you want to get in on the mukbang too? No, you I want eat. You, you no, eat. I want, to, I want to see you take a bite of that. I did. No, I want to see you take a bite. Not a full spoon. Come on, what's wrong with it? It doesn't. Just, Why don't you like it? I do. Then eat it. I'm just full. <laughs> then no dessert, and it'll be bedtime. Isn't that what Daddy said? Yes. Plus, it's not right, fine. close to night, is it? Mm-hmm. It's close to night? Yes, it's 7 o'clock, honey. It is 7.17. Huh? It is mm -hmm. almost bedtime. Mm-hmm. Uh. <gasps> we were watching Minecraft. Mm -mm. Jurassic. Hi. Hi. Mm -hmm. But I get right. it. Bed. You just threw the word out of me. <laughs> he actually did. Go to bed, sweetheart. <laughs> we watch bed. Minecraft. Why aren't you inside eating? I was sending him to bed. Why? Jay said he's done. Okay, so Jay says it's done. Why are you sending Dean? He came out here. I assumed he was done. I saw my bring these ones down too. Mm hmm. We don't even know if they're going to pick them up. Yeah. So I say leave it. If it doesn't have the wheels, leave it for now and we'll see if they pick up. If they do, we'll take it down next time. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Okay. okay. If you walked into the woman's bedroom, it was lined. You'd think you were walking into a Joanne's fabric store. <gasps> okay. <laughs> Every wall in the house had um bookcases against them i mean wall-to-wall -wall bookcases and they were all filled with crafts collectibles i mean there was a huge mug collection um i don't even want to know what was on her porch um she had a screened in back porch it had three freezers you could walk in. You had just enough room to walk in and open the freezer doors. And I mean, you know, they're the tall freezers. You know, like, refrigerator size freezers. And oh my God, her kitchen covered in baking stuff. I mean, baking pans of anything and everything you could name. This woman had everything. I mean... Um, anything and everything she needs to make. I mean, she could make a wedding dress from scratch out of just what she had inside the house. So, the woman is a hoarder. It got to the point she had to buy a new house to go up on her property 
just so they would have room to live. Well, my house was the overflow. Um, my husband's grandparents' stuff was still in the house. Dad, no. Are you done eating? I'm not done. Then you better get in there and eat, or you're going to bed without get eating your dinner. Ass inside. So, I mean, I found a. It was. It is seven twenty. Why? I can say it's Tuesday. If you made it, or if you hurried up, you can make food pantry. But never mind. Yeah. No. It is. It was um. Two thousand three. Yeah, we were living there in two thousand three. And I found a bottle of whiskey that had been opened in the 1980s. And one shot had been taken out of that bottle. And the rest was left hidden in the house. And I found it. Okay. I did not have, I didn't exactly have room in the closets. To hang up my clothes because the grandmother's clothes were already were still hanging up. You know, the grandparents' clothes. And anytime I would take them down to box up, I'd get yelled at. So I mean I had um I did have plenty of dresser space though. I mean, I used the dressers. The dressers were fine. They had already been emptied. But heaven forbid I touched the stuff in the closet. And we could not replace the furniture. Yeah. So. <sighs> the house was a little overcluttered when CPS came in. Came in one day, said, um, okay, we're going to, uh, I signed papers with them to try to get child care two days a week so that I could, you know, have days to clean and purge everything and, you know, try to get my mother-in-law on board with the purge, um, but CPS came back the next day and gave us an ultimatum. I mean, we had everything done on their list. They gave us a list of stuff to do. And I checked off everything on that list. Except for one, which I was finishing up. When they got there. So. Here it was. I already was suffering from postpartum depression. I was getting you know. Treated for it. Um, from a family doctor. Um, yeah. Um, I mean my daughter was getting treated. At the time for her heat rash. And. Um, she had stopped gaining weight. So, we were in the process of switching her from breast milk to formula. So, um, the doctor had me pumping and then putting formula in my breast milk. So, and I'm sorry, if any of you ladies have ever had to pump, that takes time. You've got to pump every it's 15 10 to 15 minutes per side every four hours just to get enough milk for the child 
So, yeah, I, and then on top of that, Avery was, you know, 18 months old and getting, he was at that exploring stage. So I'm keeping an eye on him. I'm watching Candace and it was just, I mean, I did a lot. I had a lot on my plate. And at the same time, I'm trying to clean up this house. I'm fighting with my mother-in-law saying, look, you need to get this stuff out. Can we please get this stuff out? I would like my own room. I mean, I don't want to see knitting books. I don't want to see books on sewing. I mean, I don't want to see books on quilting. These are not my books on the bookshelf. I would like to put my books on the bookshelf. Instead of having my books, you know, in a box under my bed. <sighs> but, mm. so it was fun, but no. You know, uh, CPS came the very next day, gave us the ultimatum, either sign your kids over to foster care for one month, or have a police officer visit you daily. And if the police officer so chooses, he or she will have the authority to take your children away. And it will be harder for you to get them back. So... I'm sorry, this woman was, she came up to here, okay? I could see eye to eye with this woman. And Sean was, you know, at least a full head taller than me. I could stand beside Sean and my head would rest right here on his shoulder. I just have to go, mm -hmm. yeah, like this. And, ah, my head was on his shoulder. And he could count the nose hairs this woman had. I mean, you walk in, oh my god, you don't have air condi you don't have air conditioning? That's child abuse. Okay, so not having AC was child abuse or neglect. Is it a law? <sighs> so, we fought, and we fought, and we fought. And with CPS, I mean, I'm sorry, they had our um, visit supervisor was this 20-year-old woman who had gone to school, you know, and received a, well, yeah, 20-something-year-old woman who had gone to school and got her master's, I think, is it her ba either her bachelor's or her master's, I don't know, in child development. Yet, she had never raised a child. She never had a child. She was single. No husband, no children. I mean, she didn't even look after her nieces and nephews or anything. Okay? She didn't babysit. She didn't do child care. Nothing. All she had was education. And she was supposed to tell us how to parent. You figure that one out. 
I'm sorry. You follow a book on parenting. Um, and because all this was going on, because CPS got involved, my husband lost his job. So we literally became independent workers. Um, to put it bluntly, we delivered newspapers for a living. Um, every night we would head to the um, to the warehouse. Fill up my car with uh, Star Tribune newspapers. And then we would go out and we would deliver them to all the gas stations and, you know, all the homes that ordered them. We... Uh, so, it was fun. It was a nice job. We, um, Sean and I did it together. Uh, we made enough money at least to pay for the gas in the car, our phone, and our internet, and electricity. Um, for food, <laughs> um, oh, we did have we did have some money for food. Um, it was at that point. It was back then that I found the little pot, little bags of pasta that I showed you that I love. At that point, back then, they were $0.25 cents a bag. <laughs> so I would get a $0.25 cent bag of pasta. I would get a cheap um, pound of hamburger. And, you know, that's when I started doing all these small little cheap meals that I have shown you. Um, I would also dumpster dive. And one of our favorite places to dumpster dive was at a gas station. Uh, we knew the guy who worked there overnight. And he would um, basically take the sandwich, the out of, you know, the out of date or you know expire today food you know you got your sandwiches the salads the chips all that stuff you know and um the uh convenience food like the hot dogs on the rollers and um you know the chicken and the pizza all that stuff he would put all of that in one bag and then he would put the uh, donuts in one bag. And then he would put the bag of food into the bag of donuts. And he would make a show uh, for the camera of walking outside with that bag. And instead of putting it in the dumpster, he would put it beside the dumpster. And when we would drop off his papers... We would, we would go around back and collect that bag. And that would be our food. But it worked. It's nice. Um, my only problem was CPS was just... They were telling uh, me and Sean one thing. They would tell the foster mom something different. They would tell my mother-in-law something different, and they would tell my mom something different. So there were like three or four different stories going on about what was going on with our kids. So, long story short, the only way to get the kids out of Minnesota was to sign custody of them over to someone who lived out of state. Hence, my mom. Little did I know, 
my mom had her own plans. Um, yeah, I'll get into that in a later video. Um, that is a very touchy subject for me. I mean, I turned to my mother in my time of need. And she literally turned around and stabbed me in the back. But, as you can see, I'm living with that same mom right now. So, she and I have mended ways. Or, as I should put it, she has not accepted her accountability. Um, I have the proof in black and white. She never accepts her accountability for it. It's all, I don't remember that. I didn't say that. Oh, you look, you're looking at it wrong. But, I am the bigger person. I stepped up and I said, you know what? I don't care. I forgive you. I forgive you. You are my mother. I love you. I forgive you. I will look past all of this. So. It's. Well. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. This couscous is really, really good. I mean, I just started with the basic couscous, and then I added some uh, Parmesan cheese, you know, the grated Parmesan cheese to it after it cooked. I mean, the couscous is easy. You boil the water with you boil butter and water. Once it starts boiling, you know, the butter is melted, the water is boiling, you take it off. You dump in the amount of couscous. And then you cover it and let it sit for five minutes. And after that five minutes, you uncover it. You fluff it like you fluff rice. And you can add whatever flavors you want to it. And it's like, oh my god, it is so good. I'm going to need to start making more of this. Ooh. <laughs> but. Looking at the time, this has been a bit longer than I expected. So I guess I am going to let you all go. And I hope you have a wonderful week. And I will try to get back to my nearly daily content <laughs> um you know tomorrow i'm hoping to do something a bit more with my hair i mean it's mm, i finally got um the clothes closet had a bleaching kit so i can lighten you know this black up here a bit more so the red will take to it better so, and I got a little bit of black, like, here. And, you know, I want to lighten that so that the red will take better. Because I, I, would, I love red hair. So, um, hopefully I can get up and do all of that tomorrow. <sighs> now that I've got my pampering, I should be fine. Hopefully. So, this is Borderline Mom. Signing off and saying I will see you later. Mm -hmm. Bye.